Hi there, I'm Ethan, and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is a series about how to get data from an external API and display it on your Wix website. In the previous video, I explained how to use the Wix Fetch API in your backend, and we set up the API call, but we were still missing something called the hash. And this is something that you might come across in different APIs, and basically, you need to encode certain data before sending it with the URL. And in order to solve that, we're going to need to install an NPM package on our Wix website. So this is a great chance to learn how to do that. Let's get started. OK, so in order to install an NPM package on our Wix website, we are going to go over here to Packages and Apps. And over here, you can see on top NPM, you click the plus sign over here and install NPM package. And before you do that, you're probably going to want to do some research and find the NPM package that you need. And basically what an NPM package is, is it's a package of code that somebody else wrote and is providing usually in an open source manner so that you can quickly implement it in your own project without having to write all that code from the beginning. Uh, and I did some research and I found an NPM package that deals with this specific kind of encoding that we need, which is the MD5. And it's called Blue Imp MD5. So if I go over to my Wix website and I search for that package name, Blue Imp, and I have it over here, Blue Imp MD5, and I can just install that. And what you'll see here on the right is basically the documentation for this NPM package. And then I can just use this on my Wix website. So if I close this over here, you'll see that the package has been installed. And now I just need to take a look at this package documentation and see how to use it. So you can take a look either in the Wix doc version of the documentation. So if I go, sorry, to packages and apps, and I click over here, then you'll see the documentation. And you, or you can check out the external documentation on other websites that document this NPM. And here I'm doing server side. Okay, the back end code is equivalent to server side in Wix. And it shows here that if I am uh, installing the package using NPM, then the way that I use the package is by using this line of code here, which is, for some reason it's cut off now. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, var MD5 equals require blue imp MD5. So I'm going to copy that over. And then I'm going to go back to our backend code. Let me zoom back in. And I am going to let's close this, just require that here on the upper level. So require and import for this um, example are, you can think of them as synonymous. I could have easily also just said import MD5 from blue imp MD5. Uh, they both would work in this scenario. And it has to be here on the top level. So before we start getting into any code and in order to use this, I am going to make our hash a MD5 encoded hash. So instead of let hash, I'm going to say uh, const hash is equal to MD5. And the way that we need to hash this is if we take a look here at the API documentation, MD5 timestamp private key public key. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is to get my private key in here as well. So in order to do that, I can just copy this one line of code over because this is already an asynchronous function. So I don't need to build another function to get my private key. I can just do this within my fetch function and I no longer have any use for that function that we used for the demonstration previously. So now I have my timestamp, my public key and my private key, and I can just use those three over here in the hashing using MD5. And really, you don't need to be 
a genius and know all these things in advance. It's really just a matter about doing of doing research and reading the documentation. I had literally no idea what MD5 was before I made this video. All I did was I went, searched Google, read up, looked for the NPM package, experimented a bit, and I found the way to make the hash. So don't get startled if you find if in your API there's another way of doing this and I didn't explain it in the video. It's really just a matter of doing a few Google searches and reading a bit of the documentation. So now I have my hash. And since this is the hash that was required to make the API call, now our fetch should work. So let's try that again. I'm going to click the button here, which runs our get characters function. Just let's erase the previous call and I'm going to run it. And over here, Okay, we have another error. Let's see. Hash, timestamp, and key combination is invalid. So let's take a look back at our function. So we have our public key, we have our private key, hash. Let's double check the documentation value digest. Ah, so here they put private key before public key. So let's make sure that we do that over here as well. So I'm going to do private key before public key. And I'm going to run this function again. So let's just erase the previous results and I'm going to call function. And now we got our data. So you see here that it says status code 200, which means good, which means we're giving you the data, we're giving you what you wanted from the API call. And down here, I'm just going to zoom out a bit so you can see everything. So this is the object that it returns. And here on the bottom, you can see data. And this just gives us some metadata about the results that were returned. So we have and here we have the actual results. And you can see that this is an array. And in each one of these, we have the name of a character. We have comics that it's in, series, stories, events, whatever is supposed to come back from this API. So that is how to install an NPM package if you need to for your API call. And in the next video, I'll be showing you the final process that you need to do to extract the data in your fetch function and to access that data from your front end code. So thanks for watching. If you like this, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.